a KQED television production. Aelzoukas was born in 1943. Diagnosed early with cerebral palsy, he was educated in a one-room schoolhouse in San Luis Obispo, California. His mother refused to institutionalize him. When Hale was born and then there were all of the diagnoses of what was going to happen, and they were urging her early on to put him in an institution, and she said, oh no, she said, I knew he was bright. She said he'd, he'd lie in his crib and he'd watch when I turned the lights on. He'd well, take his eyes from the switch to over where the light turned on. He, he was figuring things out, even as little as a baby. So I knew that, that he had a good brain. Hale was a student at UC Berkeley, a math major and fluent in Russian. The Berkeley Physically Disabled Students Program had been around for a few years, started by Ed Roberts. They were housed in a hospital off campus and the university could not meet the growing demands of the disabled community as a whole. Hale and four others founded the Center for Independent Living, the first group of its kind in the world dedicated by disabled people for disabled people. And everybody was so excited because this was going to be really independent living. And then, of course, they became so successful because they dealt with every aspect 
from how to get around in a motorized wheelchair to what's your sex life gonna be like as a disabled person? <laughs> and yes, you can have one. <laughs> and, you know, touching every topic of life. demonstration is going on throughout the entire nation, Washington, New York, Denver, here in San Francisco. In 1977, protests erupted nationwide to expand disability rights throughout the nation. Rights that were promised and not delivered. Hale and other disability activists stormed the San Francisco Federal Building to protest the Jimmy Carter's administration's refusal to sign Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. Section 504 was to prohibit discrimination on the basis of disability. One thing, it's the first really militant thing that disabled people have ever done. And we feel like we're building a real social movement. They we're really sympathizing with the, with the, with the demonstrators. You know, they, they understood this was an issue. I can tell you that every time you raise issues of sex but equal, the outrage of disabled individuals across the country is going to continue. It is going to be ignited. There will be more takeovers of buildings until finally maybe you begin to understand our position. We will no longer allow the government to up oppress disabled individuals. We want the law enforced. We want no more segregation. We will accept no more discussion of segregation. And I would appreciate it if you would stop shaking your head in agreement when I don't think you understand what we are talking about. 40 years after the protest, Judy Human sat down to talk about that fateful day. And nobody defined, for example, no curb cuts on streets as discrimination. No one defined a movie theater where they said you had to get out of your wheelchair as discrimination. No one defined a bus that wasn't accessible or a train that wasn't accessible as discrimination. And even if you, law even if you applied for a job and clearly didn't get that job because of disability, it still wasn't being called discrimination. Hale, now a leader of the movement, went with Judy Human and other activists to Washington to confront the Carter administration. They emerged victorious. As I believe that this, as in any movement for human liberation, you free one set of people and doors open for everybody. And of course, and Judy, could speak very fluently, and they were the mouthpiece of the movement. But in so many ways, Hale was the workhorse, going to those commission meetings, making sure things got done. F, T, draft, draft. So do you want me to look up draft here? Hale learned on his board. He feels comfortable, he's in charge. I think being in charge is very important. Do you want to look at this one? I think Hale's great strengths are his intellect and his belief. And if he believes in something, he will fight for what he believes in. in I think the transformative part of Hale to me has been watching him and how he can get his point across. Uh, the motion is to improve publication of the 2015 edition of the standards. Okay, thanks. Okay, all in favor of uh, publishing the 2015 edition of the standard, raise your hand or say hi. Aye. 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 Aye.
So he traveled every day on BART, so he really knew the BART system extremely well. And he knew what was needed to make it fully accessible. And because he worked uh, in an institute that was all disabilities, of course, he was very aware of the disability needs of other people uh, within the disability community. Even the design of the button, the, the design of the button that we have today is basically Hale's design. Uh, so if you go to any elevator in the system and look at the button, that is a button that Hale basically said, this is what we need. In 2012, Hale was honored for his work in transit with a plaque at the Ashby Rail Station in Berkeley. He continues his advocacy work to this day. Hale makes the monthly trip to attend the Transit Accessibility Board meeting in downtown Oakland. Here Hale is to come to that, the BART Accessibility Task Force meeting. It starts at 2, but he's looking to be on time. And one of the elevators was down and the impact that that, that had on him. He has to go to an adjacent station and then traverse back. He's a man of the people, and he goes with the, the public, and he takes public transit, and he makes a, a tremendous effort. So when when something isn't right, to when when something isn't accessible, and he, and he brings it up, um, it's a powerful message that, that he's sending. Now he's he's missed a good chunk of this meeting, where his input is so valuable. That's separate from that minimum basic accessible path. Hi, buddy. You still got some brown hair. Enough. Uh, he doesn't accept no for an answer, and that has its good parts and its bad parts. Well, the good parts are that um, he makes his way in the world. You know, he he doesn't accept limitations, and um, the bad part of not accepting limitations is that it gets you into trouble. It could be dangerous. and he's hurt himself a number of times, but somehow he keeps going.
Hale tells me he's depressed. But Hale is so optimistic, you wouldn't believe it. Hale will go forward and will push, and he won't get stopped. And that's not the sign of someone who's depressed. That's the sign of someone who, who really feels that, that he knows where he wants to go or knows what the issue is. Have you ever contemplated suicide? Yeah. I want you to be honest with me. Yeah. You have? Yeah. So what stopped you? What stopped you? <clears throat> Being on the other side of the T H I N L on the other side of the thin line. I think that there's need for a lot more hails out there. And um, it's, it's like someone being an explorer. There's, there's, there's lots of uh, battles that need to be fought in order to make um, a quality, to help people attain a quality of life that we all want for ourselves and each other. Hale really overcame the greatest barrier. He insisted on being heard. He insisted on speaking out. He insisted on getting it right. <laughs> and he made things happen that showed that it was possible for them to happen. And once uh, that occurs, a change is possible everywhere. You spent your whole life fighting for people to have better access and disability rights and to be able to, to live their own life independently. Why did you not quit? What was the reason you fought so hard? I did not want No. My S T Y L E and the word C R A M P Cramped
Want more Truly California? Visit us online to keep up with the local film scene, stream full documentaries, and submit your film to Truly California. Support for Truly California is provided by the members of KQED.